you do not have to have great hardware in order to build yourself a network attached storage device. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by that. About a year ago, I was scouring the depths of Facebook Marketplace, which out here in West Texas can be rather thin. Now, I stumbled upon what I firmly believe could be the best deal that I have ever made on Facebook Marketplace. And it was this HP Pavilion tower that the owner said was completely dead. They didn't know what was wrong with it, but they didn't have time to mess with it. So they were selling it for $5. And so me being me, you know, I, I work in IT. I know how to fix computers. I was like, dude, that is a, that is a steal. I gotta, I gotta take that up. So sure enough, I pull up at this lady's house and it looks like your, your grandparents' house, but like they had taken everything out of their house and left it in their front yard for like 20 years. Cause it was a complete mess. It, it was, it was not the kind of house that you really want to show up at and buy something from. Um, but sure enough, this lady walks out with a computer, hands it to me. I give her $5 and I take it home. And once I got home, I cracked into it and I realized that the only problem with the computer was first of all, it didn't have a power supply. And second of all, the SATA cable to the hard drive had somehow been snapped off. And so the computer would not boot. Now, if you know anything about building computers, you know that SATA cables are incredibly cheap and the power supply for this computer was not very expensive either. So effectively, I got a, a full computer for $5. As my wife would like to argue, I didn't necessarily need another computer. Now, you know, it was a deal that I couldn't pass up, but again, what was I gonna use for? So as I began thinking about it, it made a lot of sense for us to have some sort of network attached storage device so that we could both share files on the same location and edit them at different points in time from both computers that we have. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I took the hardware that I got from that computer, added a little bit more to it, and then actually created a full NAS for both my wife and I to use for document storage. So from that computer, we got an ITX motherboard, two sticks of DDR3, two gigabyte RAM. We had integrated graphics, and it also came with a half terabyte hard drive that already had a version of Windows Home installed on it. The first thing I had to add obviously was a power cable. I cannot for the life of me find where I bought it from, how much I paid for it, or any information on it. But I looked it up on Amazon and you can generally get these for about 12 to $13. Now, the second thing that I needed to get was a VGA to HDMI adapter. And it's very important for this particular model that it was exactly that because apparently those cables are not flippable. Now, once I had that, the only thing left that I needed to get was a case and then I'm adding in an extra half terabyte hard drive just for redundancy sake. Initially, when I was planning on doing this build, my first thought was to do a DIY Synology NAS. And the only reason I was trying to do that was because they are very user friendly. The downside to these types of NAS interfaces are that they are incredibly expensive. For this build in particular, for everything in total, I spent under $85. Comparatively, in order to get the same functionality out of a Synology-based NAS, you would usually have to pay upwards of $225 to $250. And I ended up not doing that because I just simply could not get it to work. No matter how many different things I tried, how many times I tried, I could never get it to load the correct way, um, you know, time after time. It, it always would break at some point. So instead of messing with all that, I, I kind of gave up on the Synology side of things. And instead I chose to just use Windows. The reason I did this is because it's really easy inside of Windows to create a shared folder that other people on your network can connect to. So that's exactly what I did. After I had everything built and put inside the case, I booted up into Windows and I created a shared folder that would share across my network and I could connect to on multiple different machines. Now, like I said earlier, I did add in a half terabyte drive in order to introduce redundancy into the system so that all my files are backed up in the unlikely event that one of the hard drives dies. Now there wasn't just a, a built-in, completely clean, automated way to do this inside of Windows. So instead what I had to do was use Task Scheduler and a batch script in order to tell Windows every night at midnight, I want you to go through and look through all the files on this volume, everything that's in this folder. And if there's anything that is not in the second folder, then I want you to copy everything from the first folder to the second folder. Now, I understand that that is not 100% complete, perfect redundancy. However, for my uses, it's exactly what I need. There's really only one file in this entire 350 gigabytes worth of storage that I really access on a day-to-day -day basis. And everything else is just kind of long-term storage. 
And because of that, if I lose 24 hours worth of edits, it's not really a big deal. So effectively, I am getting redundancy without having to introduce too much headache for myself. I am gonna leave the text of that batch script that I wrote down in the description below, just in case you guys might need it for something, or if you guys wanna do something similar for your DIY NAS build. So effectively, for $85, I built myself a perfect document storage NAS that I can access on any computer in my house. Minimal headache, very budget friendly, and honestly just a fantastic solution for exactly what I needed. Now I know this was a lot to cover in a very short amount of time, so if you have any questions or comments or you think there was something that I could have done better, please feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. I'll be checking them just to answer any questions you might have. I hope this video helped give you some ideas for exactly what you want to do for your NAS build. And if it did help you in some way, shape, form, or fashion, please feel free to subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you guys next time.